right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. And at the time of recording this, NBA Media Day was just a few days ago, so we got to see a lot of new players in new places, a lot of players coming back from injuries like Zion Williamson, other guys like that. Um, we also got to see some questionable experiences or chemistry between players already and that's ultimately what i'll be talking about for the most part today but also yesterday nba preseason began i think there's going to be more games today but we did get to see the wizards and the warriors play in the preseason over there in tokyo i believe it was so that was a good thing to see finally some basketball coming back i mean i love football but at the end of the day basketball is just better basketball is my favorite sport it's probably the most entertaining sport in my opinion but at the end of the day we have to wait a little bit still, probably about 20 days before the official NBA season begins. So I'm super excited for that. I'm super excited for the year to begin. But if you're a Suns fan, you might not be so excited. We saw a lot of bad stuff for the Phoenix Suns on Media Day. Most notably, I wasn't very surprised by this, but a lot of people were. DeAndre Ayton seemed like he was mentally checked out. Now, physically, he was there. <clears throat> you know, he was making jokes. He was laughing. Um, but when asked or when pressed about whether or not he was happy um, signing that Supermax contract or that Max extension with the Phoenix Suns, he basically just said nothing. He said he was glad he got it done. He wasn't happy that he was with the Suns. He wasn't happy that he was able to come back. He was just glad he got a deal done. And it's kind of scary to see if you're a Phoenix Suns fan this team might just not have enough chemistry for this year to to make another deep playoff run now obviously they're going to be good but jay crowder has openly and it's been rumored for the last few weeks that he has a very likely trade candidate so there's a big chance that the suns don't have one of their key pieces offensively and defensively coming back this season and at the end of the day if deandre ayton is not there mentally sure he's going to be there physically but who knows how well he's going to play if he's not actually there or wanting to push forward or try and play well for this phoenix suns organization especially with the entire situation with the owner that does not help at all this team is just in a very very awkward place and when you have a guy like devin booker as your star or your focal point of the offense He's a very stubborn guy as well, so he's not going to learn a lot. He's not going to change his mind. He's not going to develop his game into a separate area. And we saw last year in that Game 7 against the Mavericks, they were a very one-dimensional team. Their defense was decent, but their offense at times became very stagnant. And I think that's a thing that a lot of these super... Um, super strong regular season teams struggle with going into the playoffs. My Bucks have experience with that. We were great in the regular season. Nobody could stop us, but we get stagnant in the postseason. We're not able to hit shots when we need them to. Last year against the Celtics, we missed pretty much, what, like 90% of our three-point shots, and we lost both of those final two games when we could have won one just to advance to the next round. That is a crazy crazy thing to see we saw it so many times with the eric bledsoe at point guard he just couldn't hit shots and we became stagnant because Giannis hadn't developed his passing game he hadn't developed his shooting um as far as he had today so it was very difficult for us to get anything going offensively and i think that's what we saw with the suns they struggled to hit shots their offense became very stagnant and I dare say they haven't done enough this offseason to get better going into next year. All they've done this offseason, in my opinion, is mentally they've gotten worse. Now, they still bring back essentially the same core of guys. Chris Paul, Devin Booker, um, DeAndre Ayton, who as much as I wanted him to end up in Indiana, I just really wanted to see a small market team. I mean, Phoenix is relatively small compared to the bigger places, but a small market team like Indiana really get that big free agency signing. I think that would have propelled them, in my opinion, to maybe be a play in appearance with Tyrese Halliburton, um, Miles Turner, Buddy Heald, all of those guys combined with a new offensive presence and defensive presence and a guy like DeAndre Ayton who has steadily, steadily improved. And I think I'm going to go off the book here for a second, but I don't think a lot of people understand just how great or how good DeAndre Ayton has become as an NBA player. You know, he was drafted over Luka, so obviously he's going to have a lot of um, scrutiny around him. A lot of people are going to think, you know, why would they draft Luka? Why would, or why would they draft DeAndre Ayton over Luka? He's going to be a worse player. Sure, he might be a worse NBA player, but at the end of the day, he still is a very, very good NBA player. And it took him some time to get there, but he has developed his shot 
to where this year maybe it's very consistent last year it was not bad it wasn't anything crazy but it developed a ton defensively he's grown he's continued to grow as a rim protector a rebounder and a threat in the paint that is just something that you expect out of a number one overall center and he has become exactly what he was expected to be and i really wanted to see him in indiana or a smaller market somewhere that they would really appreciate signing him but unfortunately the Suns were able to re to match him because he was a restricted free agent, so that sucks. But at the end of the day, they still bring him back. Mikel Bridges is a guy that I'm very big on, and a lot of people are very big on. Um, you know, he's a great defender. He needs to develop his offense just a little bit more to become that next level player. But I think he can definitely do something like that. Um, I think he'll be a successful NBA player going forward. But this team just has so much. Um, just mentally floating around right now from Chris Paul basically saying that that um, the Dallas Mavericks loss in game seven didn't affect him at all he didn't learn he didn't um, grow at all as a player or a person from that series is essentially what he said that is some that's just an outrageous statement to make when you lost especially when you lost how bad you did and even more so after being the best team in the regular season now I know as a Bucks fan regular season success does not always correlate and often it doesn't at all correlate to a postseason success but in the case of the phoenix suns if you're going to have this um this personality of being ignorant and you you know you're talented you're talented and you know it you're the best team and you know it if you're going to put that personality out there on the court and in the media day you have to be able to back it up and they did not do that in the playoffs so to say that you didn't learn or you didn't grow at all as a player or a person from that Mavericks loss especially when they upset you just does not seem like a good look for the Phoenix Suns and on top of that as I mentioned the entire situation with the owner um, just a crazy crazy situation definitely not something you want in the back of the players minds or in the players minds as they're going into the regular season but hopefully for their sake they can kind of just move past that you know it's a very tough situation um and you know obviously he, he did need to get suspended it's kind of weird that he was only suspended for a year but at the end of the day that's how the nba did it i i don't really have much else to say about that because i don't want to talk about that topic this is more about the suns players but Overall, the Suns are in a very, very bad situation, in my opinion. They had an opportunity the last two years. Um, you go from a finals appearance where you blow what a 2-0 lead. You lose four straight. Okay, we bring everybody back. Let's go over it again. Let's run it back this year. And you come into the playoffs with, what, 63 wins? The best in the NBA. Um, you know, you looked really good the regular season. You come into the playoffs, and you struggle a little bit in that first round against the Pelicans they made some they showed some holes they showed some cracks in that Phoenix Suns offensive attack and their defensive attack but they ultimately got past them get into the second round you go against the Mavericks and they made the Mavericks look silly pretty much for the first two games of that series then Luka really turned it on and I'm not even going to say anybody else on the Mavericks was great Tim Hardaway Jr. was good Jalen Brunson was pretty good um, for most of his games but Spencer Dinwiddie was pretty much absolute garbage that entire series until the final game and it's just a tough look I mean you let the Mavericks come in there in Phoenix and they beat you by I don't even know 7,000 it seemed like they beat you by a ton and you come out here and y'all act all ignorant you act like you didn't learn anything you haven't grown as a team your main center your starting center and in my opinion right now the second best player on your team in front of Chris Paul at this point with his age and all that into factor he is not actually wanting to be there mentally or physically just doesn't look like it's going to be a good season for the Phoenix Suns I think they blew two perfect opportunities to win a championship and thankfully for me one of those was against the Bucks but last year it was obviously just a complete meltdown before they even got to the finals how do you guys feel about the Suns going forward I know this was a little bit harsher than I get in most of my other, other videos but you know, this media day really exposed a lot of what they're feeling going forward this season. And they're still going to be a good team. Um, I'm not saying they're going to be out of the playoffs or anything. But they're going to have to get something going or get uh, chemistry built up at some point this regular season if they want to not look like absolute um, fools going into the playoffs. And that's just how I view the Suns. That's how I view a lot of teams when they have chemistry issues like this. And it's kind of sad to say, but... 
they could very easily go from the first seed to maybe like a fourth or fifth or sixth seed this season and i wouldn't be all that surprised but if you guys disagree go ahead and comment down below i love talking to you guys down in the comments section if you did enjoy this video please hit the like button and subscribe i thank you guys so much for continuing to support me turn on post notifications so you never miss a video i'll see you guys next time peace